G'day and welcome. The integral you're looking at here is Jim Cronius's 27th integral in his list of 100 integrals. And I hope you notice immediately that in the denominator we have a sum of squares, 1 squared plus x squared. Now that expression itself is squared but we'll deal with that in due course. The pattern that you see here, a sum of squares, is traditionally simplified using a trigonometric substitution. Now which one? I hope you would know, but just in case, let's clarify the thinking behind the substitution we're going to make. We have three Pythagorean identities. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1, 1 plus tan squared theta equals sec squared theta, and 1 plus cotan squared theta equals cosec squared theta. Now, first of all, I should indicate that here in Australia we write cosec as C-O-S-E-C. -E uh, in the United States you would simply write C-S-C. -C. I hope you'll bear with me in that. But if you look at the top one, you'll see that if we want to resolve a sum or difference between squares into a single square, we would have to move either the cosine squared or the sine squared to the other side. And we would end up with sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta, or cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. And in both cases, on the right hand side we have 1 minus a square, which is not what we have here. So we can't use that first identity. If you look at the next two identities, you see that on the left hand side we have 1 plus a square, which is exactly what we have here. So we could choose either of them. Now, the bottom equation uses ratios that we don't normally think about or use a great deal. That is, cotangent and cosecant. We would find them more confusing. So we're in fact going to use, we could use it, but we are going to use the uh, middle identity, which is 1 plus tan squared theta equals uh, sec squared theta. So we want 1 plus tan squared theta here. So our substitution is going to be let x equal tan theta. Now I hope you'll bear with me for that step. There are about three significant steps in resolving this particular integral. But the first one is to understand how to look at the integral and choose the correct identity to use. So when it's 1 plus a square, we use this substitution. Now let's get moving. The derivative of tan theta is sec squared theta. So we have, multiplying both sides by d theta, dx is sec squared theta d theta. So we can now replace all the parts of this. We can leave the 1 there if we wish. We're going to replace the dx with this. I'm going to write the sec squared theta on top. And on the bottom, using this substitution, we're going to have 1 plus, and instead of x, we're going to write tan theta. Hopefully, I know I've taken a while getting there because I've explained the thinking, but hopefully you would have recognised this in a matter of seconds, written this out, I suspect in 10 or 15 seconds and be able to write this in another 10 or 15 seconds. So hopefully this, this would not have taken you more than perhaps 25 or 30 seconds to do. Now one of the nice things we have here, and it's one of the nice things about the tangent ratio, is that this produces a secant squared, but so did the derivative. So let's have a look. The derivative produced one on the top, and we're going to get one on the bottom as well. So here we go, sec squared theta d theta over 1 plus tan squared is sec squared theta, but that expression is squared as well. And one lot of sec squared theta can divide out, so we're left with 1 on sec squared theta d theta, 
which is, since we're dealing with a reciprocal ratio, the same as cosine squared theta d theta. So that's our first phase. Substitute and simplify. Notice we still haven't found the integral or taken the integral yet. Now, I'm running out of board space. You would have a, a lengthy page, or at least be able to turn the page. Uh, so I'm going to erase this. I hope you'll bear with me. And write this up here, because we now have to go into resolve this. And how do we do that? Well, now we have a square of a trig function, or a power of a trig function, and there are ways and methods of doing that. And one of them, the one we're going to use here, in fact, they almost all use this, is to use the double angle formula. So, for example, the cosine of 2 theta is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. This is one of the double angle rules. Remember our trigonometric identity, sine squared plus, plus cos squared theta equals 1? It means that we can replace this sine squared theta with 1 minus cos squared theta. Because I would like this in terms of cosine squared theta, because that's what we're going to replace. We have cosine squared theta minus 1 plus cosine squared theta. Since that negative sign applies to both parts of that uh, binomial there. And then combining these, we get 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Adding 1 to both sides, we get cos 2 theta plus 1. I'm running out of space, so I'm not even sure whether I'm off the bottom of the board here. Uh, 2 cos squared theta. And dividing both sides by 2, you can see that cos squared theta is this. And this is the conversion we're going to use. Now again, if you have experience with your uh, integration, this is something that you should know. And with a little bit of practice, you will get to know it. Uh, so instead of having to do all this calculation on the side of the page, hopefully you would just know that the cosine squared is a half, I'm going to put this half out the front of the integral, of cos 2 theta plus 1. So, although I've done it here, in these videos I'm trying to explain everything, uh, hopefully you would know that conversion and use it almost immediately. So at this point, if you, if you knew what you were doing, uh, I would hope that you would reach this point in perhaps 30 or 40 seconds. Now, oh, I should mention too, you'll notice my use of parentheses here. Correctly speaking, an integral is finding an area, it's a length times a breadth, and rightly, all of this material should be in parentheses because it's all collectively multiplied by d theta. Uh, a lot of people just ignore that and don't put the parentheses in, but properly they should be there. Now, what's the integral of cos 2 theta? Well, it's sine 2 theta over theta. Oh, sorry, over 2. Dear, oh dear. It's about 2 o'clock in the morning and I'm a little bit tired. The integral of 1 d theta is theta, and I'll just add a constant. Now, all that remains is to convert this back to x. But here we have a double angle. So I'm going to use our expansion of sine 2 theta, 
which is 2 sine theta cos theta, to reduce this to two single angle uh, trig functions. And the twos will divide out. And then comes the last phase. Now I'm going to move this up again. Let's put it up here. So we now have one half outside of the twos have divided out, so it's sine theta cos theta plus theta plus c. So that's that. Now how do we resolve this? Well, if x is tan theta, then tan of theta is x. Let's draw a right angle triangle with theta in it. If the tangent of theta is x, then that would be x over 1 opposite over adjacent. And using Pythagoras' theorem, this would be the square root of 1 plus x squared, or x squared plus 1. I'm going to write it 1 plus x squared because the original integral had it in that form. So from this triangle, because we use this substitution, which identifies this triangle, then we can now identify what sine theta and cosine theta must be. Well, sine theta from this will be opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is adjacent on hypotenuse. Theta we get from this expression by taking the inverse tangent of both sides. Remember the inverse tangent, it's even there in the terminology, is the inverse function of tangent, which effectively undoes the operation. So theta is the inverse tan of x plus c. I've now, I'm running into this. I'll get rid of this now. You've seen all that. So tidying all this up, x times 1 is just x, and on the bottom I've got 2, and the, this product just simply gives me 1 plus x squared. And I also have half of this inverse tan function plus c. And that is the solution to our integral. There are a number of significant steps in resolving this integral. I hope you found it interesting and informative uh, and perhaps even a little bit challenging, but I hope it's given you food for thought and some ammunition for resolving future integrals. And I thank you for watching.